Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. This is a beautiful new Android standalone smartwatch phone running Android 9. We've taken a little bit of a look at it. We're going to go deeper today with watch faces and basic watch operation. Just to remind you, you can pick it up a production unit like this directly from Banggood. Check the show notes for a discount coupon. It's also coming to us from the Lockmat APP LLP official store on AliExpress. Either one of these locations, you can pick it up. I got coupon discounts for both of them, so check the show notes. All right, here we go. Look at this. This is on the third hole in, and it's way too big for me. It flops all over the place. If I move it up to the second hole, that's just about right. Shouldn't be too tight, but I can stretch it into that first hole and tighten that puppy up if I were going to go out and exercise and wanted a good clean hold on here. But I'm going to run it in the second one. I've uh, got a 7-inch circumference wrist. If you're wondering about yours, take one of those little tape measure thingies and wrap it around right here above your bump over there on the side of your hand. That's where it'll lie. If you're uh, much smaller than seven inches, um, yeah, it's going to be a little loose on you. Okay, we've got a bunch, not a bunch, but a few watch faces in here. Um, just to give you an overview, there's a circular one. Here's a nice digital. Here's another one. So they expand bigger. Um, but it's a round one on a square watch. That's a little bit different. This is interesting. It's showing you the time you set for your watch, and then you can select another time zone to show down here. And they're accurate. Once you know you got yourself on your internet time, it'll be correct. We just had that one. There's a nice blue watch face on here. Uh, some more. There's one with a picture in the background. This is the one where you could go into the Play Store, supposedly, go in to make phone calls, go into your camera, go into the music player, transfer music files to the watch via USB, so this will play the music on the watch, and so forth. Uh, we'll look more at these individually. There's one that's animated, so you can see that it supports animated watch faces and it supports the uh, touch faces uh, as well. There's another di uh, digital round one. We showed you that one on another screen. Here's an interesting one that just is uh, like a loop around uh, showing the time. Here's a different version that's I would think showing heart rate, but there's no heart rate listed anywhere. There's a place for weather, but it's not picking that up. Where I'm at, it's not integrating. But you do have touch buttons. I don't know why it's going off so, so quickly. I've set it for five minutes, but it times out when you're looking at the watch faces and changing them really quickly, which I guess is good. It's going to keep me moving, right? And then this is the last one called Yellow Light. Now, you notice when you go over, you don't have the plus sign or any of the other stuff, and that's something... I'm working on the prototype to try to figure out because from what I can tell, we don't have the ability to install any um, any additional watch faces. It's just what it comes with. But we'll tell you more about that when we go into the more um, advanced review on the prototype. Here's step count information. Here's where you'd get your basic heart rate. As on all of these, it doesn't do more than heart rate. It doesn't do blood pressure, blood oxygen, sleep timing, uh, sleep apnea. None of the stuff you get on the fitness bands are in here. And it's taking a little bit of a while to get it. But it does, and there it did it, and it finished. When it stops turn, uh, being red, you're done. These are the different activities that you've got, and there's a special page just for it, like this. But, as I mentioned, it's not integrated yet with GPS. You get your time, heart rate, calories burned, and distance traveled from step count. And that's true. You got a long hole. Oh, it's too short, so there we go. You can uh, set different goals for these different things. A fitness time, distance, or calorie consumption. And it'll let you know about all of that. And that's the same on all of them. And again, the settings right down here, you can put in your personal data, gender, height, weight, and you can change the units from miles to kilometers. So that's kind of cool. But you don't have a lot of selection. 
Honestly, I wouldn't be buying this for fitness. We got to try some other apps like Strava or Runtastic or RunMe or whatever it's called. A variety of different ones to see if there are some that will integrate correctly with the GPS. Here's the music player. We've seen that. This is a voice recorder and I can be talking right now and I, there's no way really to adjust the gain, but it does do a recording. And if I stop this, I'm not sure what the volume is set at. Um, but how do I show the recording? Not sure. I guess we'll have to come back to that. Weather, if it's working, would be here. When it was working on the prototype, it only shows in centigrade. There's no Fahrenheit. This is your low and your high, and this is the current weather. And then this is just a basic timer that you've got uh, with a step counter capability. When you leave it and you come back to it, because it's a nice big Android watch, it's still running. So we can leave that running in the background. And one more thing, the uh, timer. There's a panel of timers, each of them like toothbrushes, two minutes, right? Immediately starts up, counts down, and it'll stop. Uh, you have 15 minutes here. You've got 10 minutes there and so forth. Just a simple timer on here. Now check this out. On a few of these, you've got an extra screen. See the dots at the bottom? When I touch them, if it goes away, you've opened the app. And you can scroll down and see more information. Your step information with a plot over the week. All kinds of good stuff. Slide and you're back again. Heart rate? Sure. Touch it. Shows you your last heart rate. Your whole sequence of heart rates. It's doing continuous heart rate, and that's your real chart. Here's where I took it off for taking a shower. Yep, Mr. Dix is nice and clean right now. I know, more than you wanted to know. Um, so you've got that there too. And on and on and on. So those are the things that you see when you scroll across. All the way back, you get to the app drawer, not notifications like we're used to seeing. When you scroll down, you're getting to this page, shows you your power and other stuff. That's your connection to the phone if you're hooked up to the app. Wi-Fi, of course. This is a find your phone, do not disturb. This is your overall brightness. There's the low, middle, and high. There's three levels. Airplane mode, this is a super... Uh, energy saving mode that just puts you in time but it's a really nice big time display that's showing you uh, the date and your step count and that's it and you can't do anything it says long press the screen to exit so we press it we wait it exits and now it rebooted itself back into the watch face so if you just if you really want to save power it's not that it's not responsive. I know you guys watch my finger all the time. It's just that you got to hit it right at the edge for it to work. You can't kind of pull it down like you do on a phone. Um, if you really want just the time and long, long battery life, you can go into that one. That's a do not disturb. And then this takes you into your overall settings, which, of course, we could get from that upper right-hand corner app. Let's walk through them. Connect mobile phone is not here on the updated version. That's been, it's just a QR code, and that's been buried someplace else. That was one other change in the firmware update. But you will see Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Yeah, you can do a complete personal hotspot if you've got a SIM card in it that's got a data plan. Big beefy battery, you can put this thing in a regular hotspot and provide internet to your tablet, your computer, a couple of friends, whatever you want. And like I said, you got the power connector here that could go to a power bank if you're out in the field, a, a, a car battery with a proper uh, hookup to it. I mean, you could get infinite internet off of a cell connection using this thing that's removable from the dock as a hotspot. So some of you guys I know are just going to be buying this thing for being a hotspot and not even use it as a watch. There's your mobile network uh, that you can do all your setup in there. This is your volume levels and sounds and things. Um, this is your overall display. See, I've set it for five minutes. It goes from eight seconds to five minutes, not 30 minutes anymore. But if you want to make it on infinite, that capability is there. It's just you have to install floating toucher, 
which works on this one. It does not work on Android 10, but it does work on Android 9. I've done that on the prototype, set it for infinity, just let it go. It's great. It's really cool. And I'm sure there's other apps you can do that too. Application display adjustment tweaks the applications to fit on the screen, but what I find is it makes the font really, really small, as small as this or smaller, so I generally don't turn it on. And that's all in the display. Here's the wireless update. Just in case, let's check it once again. Sometimes it takes it a while, you know, to register out on the Internet. Nope, it still says I'm up to date, so it's not recognizing the new update. Battery now gives us a few different options. There's the extreme power saving, which we already showed you. It's exactly the same as pulling down and pushing that button. Uh, you're going to get the time and that's it. When you bail out of it, it reboots back up into the watch face. Your timer is stopped if you had it running. All of that stuff. Power savings at night after turning this on with the watch is at, uh, what, 2400 to 600 that it will uh, automatically go into the power savings mode, but it'll come back out of it again. So if you're not going to use it to sleep with at night, this is a good idea to make sure you have some power in the morning if you forgot to put it on the charger, right? Smart idea. Intelligent cleaning now. Important. This is an important one. This is the one that if the watch just turns off, it's going to stop everything running in the background. So your social media apps, your uh, video conferencing apps uh, that you want to take incoming calls from, like Duo or something like that, and any of the other apps that you want to keep running in the background, you have to turn this off. Now, it's an all or nothing. In Android 10, we've seen the implementation, and Android 7, where you can selectively turn them on or off. Here, it's all or nothing. So if you have any app that you want to run in the background, you got to turn this off for all of them. Okay? Yeah. In a third-party app, I've got a workaround for that we'll talk about later on all the different kind of limitations. Um, there's some interesting workarounds until they fix the bugs or, or, or features, whichever way you want to call it. Um, there are ways you can make it work more like the way you want it to work, but for now, you got to turn that off if you don't want your apps automatically closed when the screen goes off. These are all features that are either differently named or different um, tweaks on this version of Android. Here's your time where you can do your auto settings or um, you can go in and select your time zone by choosing your region, whatever country. So I could go down United States. I don't know. Let's just pick something. Hong Kong. Um, Time zone is there's only one, and so now it's going to set for Hong Kong, I guess. Uh, and, of course, you can use 12 or 24 hour. I like to use AM, PM, so we can set that there. Normally, we don't go at all this deep, but this is the first time you're seeing this one. Security. Here you can put in a password, and you can do the face unlock. Guys, no matter what watch you've got, don't mess it up and forget your password or pass pattern or whatever. There's really no easy way to get out of it. You have to reflash the firmware, and we don't have firmware files for this one to flash it, so be really careful if you do lock your watch. Here's where you turn on GPS. It's not normal. It's not up where it normally is located. It's way down here, location services. That's hiding under security. Very weird. Here's our languages. It shows you which one you're on, and you can add them from here. You can use a virtual keyboard or your current keyboard. This is the twist your wrist to see the time. Your app manager for all of the apps you have installed, and you can go into any of them. For stop, do the permissions, all the things you're used to seeing. That's where you get to that. And then my device, of course, is your watch model. About the watch, which is where we saw... Um, how much storage you're using and how much you've got, your RAM, the firmware version, the baseband version, the watch QR code, which is what you'll be scanning to tie into the uh, app if you don't do that right at the beginning when you're setting everything up. We already did a restore, and then there's just plain old restart and shutdown, which is the same thing you get to when you press and hold the button. And this is a slider now. Slide it to shut down, restart, and multitasking is, of course, where you have all the different uh, apps that you've been looking at and a clear button that gets rid of them. How many of you guys are southpaws? You know what I mean. we got the camera coming off of your left arm, but you guys are left-handed, so you want to wear it on your right arm. Will it work, you ask? Well, let's find out. 
I'm going to wrap it around. Put, I am not used to this. Put it through its paces. Oh, don't fall off. Come on, come on. Okay, okay, okay. Boom. And I'll just put it through the last one. So you can see, well, we've got a little bit of a problem. This is offset from the standard housing, and it's meant so that when you flip your wrist up, it's not going to run into it. Now it's even worse because it's off on the side. However, the camera is pointed forward, so you could theoretically go in here and activate the camera and take pictures with your wrist. Now, you'll be normal. This will be comfortable for you. And, of course, it's going to be upright because it's the same uprightness. So you got good camera. You got, of course, your camera over here. You have to reach over for the button. The only problem is mm, it's a little bit close to the wrist. So I don't know. If you can slide it back up a little bit, maybe that'll work for you. But that's what it looks like on your right arm in case you want to wear it there. You can tell if somebody's a watch collector because this question comes up frequently. With these four pin connectors, are they all the same? Are they identical? Are they interchangeable, especially between Android watches? They are not. In fact, they're radically different. Here's three, for example. These two black ones look really, really similar. Just one's got a shiny outside. Other than that, they appear to be basically the same, except they're not. The one that's a little bit dull is the one that came with this watch, and it connects this way. The one that's shiny won't connect that way. The magnets are backwards. And guess what? So are the pins, and so is the charging circuitry. If I were to connect this into the USB on a computer or even a phone charger, I run the risk of completely damaging this watch. All with a wire that looks the same. So you say, okay then, the wire has to come off of the bottom. I'll remember that. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Check this one out. That one comes... Whoa, wait a minute. That one doesn't either. That comes off the top. Okay, that's got to be a bad one. I can't plug that one in. Wrong. This wire is exactly identical to this one that goes in pointed downward. It can charge it. You can transfer files with it. It's identical. That's why I'm using a white one to keep track of all of these. So these two will work on the watch and this one will not, and the only fourth combination, and I'm sure I must have one here, is another one that goes down this way that won't work. Be careful, gang. Label your wires. Make sure you know which one goes with which watch when you unpack your watch. And don't get them mixed up. So how does Android 9 handle file transfers? Pretty easy. Take your standard charging cord. Take your watch. Connect it. Wait a second, computer saying that it's looking like it's wanting to connect. Tap that screen, tap file transfer, and you've got it. So let's finish up by turning off. We press and hold. You have a slide for reboot or shutdown or multitasking, of course, where you can clear out all your open apps. I want to show you something on boot up. So I am going to do a reboot. Do you want to do it? Yes, we do. Now, when it's shutting down, it's pretty much on its own and it's quiet. So you don't have to worry about much. You can do that anywhere. But when the watch starts up, no matter what functions you've got set to make it silent so it doesn't make any noise at all, it will always, always do the boot up song. The boot up song, you know, the piano thing. There it goes. Now, what are you going to do to suppress that if you can't actually turn it off in the sound settings? You rely on the little speaker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot it again, and I'm going to show you that the speaker for this watch is right... Man, it's hard to see, isn't it? Get all these uh, reflections. It's right there. I can stick my fingernail almost in it. It's a little slit right there. So you take any finger, you cover it, 
I mean, this works if you're on a phone call and you want to, you know, mute it, or if you've got music playing or anything. There it is. Hear it? That's the trick for muting the startup sound. So that's going to do it for today, gang. There's so much more to cover, and we will be covering it all in upcoming editions of this series apparently we're developing. Um, we covered quite a bit today. The unboxing is behind us and the first look at some of this stuff on how you set it up and comparisons of firmware. We have yet to move into all the different apps that are in this thing, stock apps, as well as, just to give you a hint, here are a few of some of the third-party apps that I've installed here on the prototype and been working with and testing. Everything from communications, cameras, fitness, uh, testing software, apps, all kinds of stuff. So we'll be doing a look at each of these, or most of them, uh, in a future edition as well. So with that, I'd like to invite you to subscribe if you haven't yet so you can be notified when we do updates. They will be scattered in amongst a few other reviews that I'm constantly giving you guys on different types of watches, but we'll always come back to this one, and you can always go over and pick it up anytime you're ready. We got a link in Banggood. Banggood's got the production units. They're shipping right now. Um, Check the uh, show notes for the link that'll take you to their buying page. And I'm going to have a good coupon for you as well. They just notified me about that. Banggood is a big, big business. They've got distribution centers all around the world. Sometimes my product comes out of Bahrain, other times out of China, Hong Kong, all over the place. So large company, quick and easy distribution uh, prices fluctuate as they do with all of the different companies, so compare the prices to check it out. I always recommend, if you can, upgrade to faster shipping if you want it soon. From the AliExpress um, environment, which is kind of like uh, Amazon, eBay-ish, where you have a lot of independent um, companies that uh, work out of the AliExpress headline, of which the LockMat APP LLP official store is one of them. In this official store, they do carry the Max, and um, as you've seen before, again, the prices are jumping all over the place. I've got some really good coupon discounts for you happening right now through the end of February 2021. After that, we'll see what happens. But again, check the show notes for the link to hop over to this store if you'd like to pick it up. Shipping, again, um, is on individual store basis. These are smaller stores that ship directly and don't have the big distribution warehouses so shipping might be a little bit longer or you might have to pay a little bit more for shipping but you might get a really good discount price it's it's all up in the air and it has to do with when you're ready to buy we will be back i promise got a lot more to talk about on this one it's becoming rapidly one of my favorites i carry it in my pocket all the time now and sometimes i wear it on my arm as well it got a SIM card in it doing the whole nine yards. It's really fun. Okay, gang, we'll see you again soon. Thanks again for watching.